Hello, hello, hello. Sorry, guys. I've been having a little bit of issues with the internet today. Hello, good evening, teacher. Hello, Chalo, ¿cómo estás? I'm pretty good. <laughs> nice, nice. Nice to hear. Diana, hello. Hello, teacher. Hello, hello. Hello and welcome. Hello and welcome. Our Friday. And then we have our long weekend and that's pretty much it. Like, do you guys still get excited that you guys are starting the week and that it's Friday? And the weekend has arrived. Do you guys get excited about that? Yeah. <laughs> you still do? Yes, I do. All right. Yeah. Well, that's really good. That's really good. That's always nice. It always feels nice, right? Do you guys follow uh, the movies that are coming out from DC and like the movies for the Avengers and stuff like that? Superman, Batman, that type of stuff? Yeah. <laughs> you do? All right. Um, the, there's a new movie that just came out, Justice League. But it's, they say that it's uh, four hours long. Alexander, hello and welcome. Four oh. hours long. It is the rain here. Right. The, have, you, have you had the chance to watch it, Jose? Or not yet? Uh, yeah, I watch it. Really? That's yeah. really nice. That's really nice. Did you like yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what I understand is that it's that Superman movie, which is the Justin League movie, except um, in the first movie, they had to do a lot of cuts, you know, to make it a little bit shorter and then to kind of give it, you know, a certain a certain rating or or for some people not to get, you know, confused and stuff like that and i heard that this one is called the sack snyder cut correct sack snyder cut and so it's a director's cut and they left a lot of stuff in it and so it, it actually turned out to be a four hour long movie but it has a lot of like cool stuff that was that that they had taken out before that they that they left on this one so now my question is was it worth it was it worth the four hours chalo all right i can hear you pretty well because it's raining here okay okay uh, so the question was what if you had to pay like, for example, if you had to go watch it at the movies and they were charging you $4.50 to go watch it, would you pay and would you feel guilty for paying the $4.50? Why? Why? Because it is not okay. Is it worth it? You sitting down and being there for four hours was it worth it? Valió la pena, Chalo. I think. <laughs> all right, all right, that's it, that's it. Is if you like it, if, for me, that I like it, it works. All right, okay. Yeah, I like I like those type of movies too. So I'm hoping, I, I you know, I, I'm hoping I get to watch it soon. George, hello, my friend, welcome. Hello. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Hello. Hello and good evening. 
All right, we're gonna we're gonna start off by asking you guys just you know the, the the same question, right? Same questions that we ask pretty much every day, right? How are you guys doing with the platform work? Let me go ahead and bring that around. How is it? And are you guys okay with the platform work? How's everybody coming along? I have on the 95%. Oh, nice. Well done. Okay. Yeah. Hello, Maricela. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. So if we were to go back into the courses, right? Section one, how is everybody doing? Was everybody able to complete section one? Well, everybody that's here. Were you guys able to complete section one? Let's go back a little bit here. Let's see. Okay. And so all of section one, let me see. I think I left one video and I think that's why you're still asking. Oh no, the knowledge checks. Okay. This one from section one went back all the way to you describing how you have changed. And then let me see, listening exercises. I think we, I can finish those tonight. Reading exercise, which is a full house. Okay. Then we got into section two. And here we had a few knowledge checks that we had completed together. Knowledge check. Did everybody, was everybody here able to complete the section two and the knowledge checks? Remember that if you're missing a check mark, it could be from the videos because the video you have to turn it on and then let it finish by itself. And then it will give you the green check mark. Everybody good? Okay. Everybody got the knowledge checks. And this is where we left off, I believe. And then from 2.11, we went into the, actually the midterm, I believe, yeah. So midterm A, did everybody complete midterm A? Do you guys need any help with any of these in the midterm portion, in the sections? Midterm A, B, C, D. I believe we may, we actually completed some of these in class, right? Okay, moving on to section three. In section three, there's one knowledge check, which was 3.2. This one, I believe we also did together. And I believe we sent some pictures on the WhatsApp. So if you guys need help, you can use the WhatsApp as a reference. WhatsApp. 3.2. Then we had a video of the city. Oh. How how did you guys were you guys able to sure. watch? Yeah. In the yeah. in the uh, in that in Bogota, which is situated, um, I have a problem because always uh, putting bad. Yeah, yeah. What happens was what happens with this one, Chelo, is that if you put a space here. Yeah. So it has to be Bogota, the comma, no space. Oh. And then you continue, which is situated on a high plateau in central Columbia, Columbia comma, has frequently changing weather. 
and then oh. dot. El punto. Oh, okay. Try it like that and let me know if it if it works. Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So then I, I, I believe we moved on from this one. We went into the vocabularies. Well, you guys should have gone into the vocabulary uh, talking about the city. And then you have this section which says what makes a city. There's a video and then they have like a little story. And then you have the listening exercise, which I believe we also did. We did 3.5. We move into the modifiers. This one we still haven't done. There's the video explaining the modifiers and then the listening exercise. Okay. Um, for those of you guys who have gotten to this point, did you guys have any questions about the modifiers? I can, uh, I had a couple of slides here for the modifiers. And so we can discuss the modifiers and then go back to the video and then go back and try to finish these knowledge, these acknowledge checks that we have. Okay. All right. So let's, let's do it. Let's go here. Okay. So the initial, um, the initial video talked about orders of modifiers when you guys um, were uh, saying something in a, or you know, where you were writing a sentence or a phrase, or you guys were saying a sentence, reading a sentence or saying a phrase, you know, what was the order of these modifiers? And so what I did is I got you guys something first to start off with what is the correct versus what is the wrong way of using these. And so we start off real quick, some of the examples, and I want you guys to kind of take a look at those. Give me one second. Let me go ahead and change it up a little bit. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Just the presentation. But I can't even find the presentation. So that's weird. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay. Can you guys still see the presentation? So I want you guys, I want you guys to kind of go through these examples, right? And read the correct sentence, just the correct sentence on all of these. All right, so now I am going to read the wrong example and then you guys compare the sound, okay? Let's, let's start off with the first one. This is a hot, long summer. The correct sentence would be, this is a long, hot summer. So the other way around, right? And we're gonna to explain to you guys why it has to be that way in just a second. Next one, he gave me an old spring oversized black jacket versus he gave me an oversized old black spring jacket. Completamente al revés, right? Uh, well, old was in the middle. Okay. 
Next one. Who left the two-week-old rotten foul banana on my desk? Versus who left a foul rotten two-week-old banana on my desk? Foul rotten two-week-old banana on my desk. It even sounds a little bit better, right? And then the last one here. This is my new white sleek iPad versus this is my sleek new white iPad. Sleek new white iPad. So now let's talk about why that is. Here it is. This is how they work. Wow, teacher, all of them? This is the 17? Yeah, yeah. So let's say you had a sentence that included all of these. You would have to formulate your sentence or your phrase in this manner. This is the correct way. So if in the sentence, the phrase of what you're saying, you have the, mine, or yours, those would need to be first. That is like the first thing you need to put in any sentence or phrase. That is order number one. And these are called determiners. So let's talk about that, right? The section is called orders of the modifiers. Modifiers are all of these. And each of the modifiers has a different name. And they do and they perform a different function. Number one on the list, determiners. That means that they go number one. They go first. What is a modifier? Well, words like the and your. Number two, these are ordinals. These are when you voice out first, second, or third. First, I went here, second, I went there, and then third and last, I went here and there, right? The third order is modifiers. I'm sorry, the third modifier is cardinals. And so here you actually say the number one or number two. One, two. Number four, we have opinion, which is nice, easy, beautiful. Oh, that was nice. Oh, that was easy. Oh, you're so beautiful. It's an opinion, right? You can't really prove that you are beautiful. Al menos que seas el teacher. Si sos el teacher, entonces automáticamente ya so beautiful. Okay. Number five is size. Small, large. Number six, measurements. Short, long. Number seven is the condition. Is it worn? Is it tired? Number eight, age, old, new. Number nine, temperature, hot, cold. Number 10, shape, round, square. 11, we have the color pattern. Well, the color or the pattern. It is green or it is striped. Number 12, the origin. Japanese, American. 13 would be season, time. And you guys can say summer or noon. Number 14, we can talk about materials, metal or wooden. Number 15, power. Is it electric? Is it mechanical? Mm -hmm. 
I would say that worn, worn down would be desgastado. Have you guys ever seen tires when they're brand new? And the, the black rubber looks really nice and really thick. And then after a year of having those tires, they're really scraped or they're, bueno, nosotros le decimos que está bien lisita. You cannot see the thread anymore. That is worn down. Now, worn down happens to a lot of things. Uh, it could happen to your jeans, for example, uh, around the knees. Uh, it could happen to a favorite shirt of yours. You know, if you have like a long shirt, the elbow area gets worn down. It gets really thin as opposed to the rest of the shirt. So you guys can look at it that way. All right, the next one would be location, bedroom, table. And then number 17, the purpose, which is party or work. What are you going to use it for? So now let's go back to this one. Okay. Actually, I think we can put them both side by side. Hold on. So we can use them both. Let me try that. And let's make it a little bit small. Okay. So hot and long. What number or in, yeah, in what number does hot fit temperature. in the table? In temperature, right? Number nine. Number nine. Yeah. Okay. All right. Temperature. Temperature nine. Okay, so we got that. Number nine. Okay. How about long? Six. Where does long belong? Six. Let me see where is six. There measurement, right? Short or long. So then you come into a sentence and you find these two letters there. I'm sorry, not the letters. You find these two words there. And you guys see that hot is before long. And so the question should pop up, is that correct? Do I remember the table? And right off the bat, we can say no, because hot comes after the measurement. So the temperature is nine, the measurement is six. So in this particular case, we would have to flip it around and we would have to say long and hot. You guys got that one? Next one. Okay, let's try old spring oversized and black all right where is old where does old fit in the table number eight number eight all right how about spring let me see let me see 13 13 okay all right eight 13 okay all right how about oversized Maybe five. Oversized talks about uh, no, number five, size. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Because it is talking about something that is bigger, right? So oversized, okay. And then the last one is black. <clears throat> 11, okay. So then if you guys are using it like that, old is not supposed to go here. Old is supposed to go in the middle. Oversized needs to move up to the beginning. And now we have a better sentence. He gave me an oversized old, and then we move black from the end and we put spring in the end. And now we have it correct. Now we have oversized, old black spring now that's a Teacher. long explanation yes 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 it, hello Marcus. sorry but is there a reason for that is there a, or only grammar gringos it, grammar <laughs> I don't that know it, that is, that's it i don't have um um logic about the, and, that 
and and that's okay and that's okay so so for what? us yeah for us the reason it doesn't make any sense is because really it doesn't matter i mean it doesn't matter how you say this right but what happened was that they created a rule just in case you made a long description this way and so the idea is that it helps you arrange an order or give an order. I would say that that's pretty much the what I see, right? Okay. But you're you're totally correct, right? I don't think we have anything like that in Spanish. A ver, eh, master yeah. ahí en lingüística. En español tenemos algún algún modifier, alguna order that we have to use that is specific. Is there a law that we use in Spanish? I don't think so. No, no, I, I don't remember seeing anything like that, right? But but there there could there could be, there could be. Mm. Si alguien si alguien la ha escuchado, alguien quiere compartir, por favor, verdad? Compartan. Please let us know. All right. So in English it does exist. Remember that it, it doesn't it doesn't come up too often. However, if somebody wants to get really, really grammatical with you, they will bring it, they will bring it up, right? Um, okay. Let's say, for example, you're taking an English exam and the person who is, uh, the person who is interviewing you has a really good concept on how to use modifiers. More than likely, when he gives you your score, if you missed any modifiers, they will give you, uh, they will give you there the feedback. Now, the ones that we use the most, I want you guys to look at some of these. Which ones do you guys think we use the most in conversations? And they're all over the place, I believe. Number one. Number one. Right. That's how we start our sentences. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So usually you start off your sentence with that, either uh, the, or you started with your, or you started with mine. You started with something like that. Right. And then usually for us, when we start to put or provide a story, we'll say first this happened and then second that happened. Right. And then so usually we'll do it like that. We only use one and two. Like if we're giving a list and we usually use it when we have an email that we have to write and there are specific tasks. I want you to do these four tasks. Number one, I want you to get home y, y, y bajar la ropa porque se me va, se me va a mojar. Uh, task number two is going to be to throw away the trash. Uh, task three and four, y, y así los pones. So usually we use these for specific tasks, right? Now, with opinions, remember that with opinions, it's, it's very rare because we only use it with our close friends or people that we really know. Um, we don't go up to somebody and just say, oh my God, I think you're so beautiful, right? We don't, we don't really do that. Well, not in our culture, right? Um, we do, however, bring it up. For example, if we take an exam, uh, what did you think about the exam? Well, you know what? It was easy. Right? And then, so that's where you can throw it in. Um, you can also say, did you like the ride? Did you like the plane ride? Did you like the bus ride? Yeah, you know, it was nice, right? And at that very moment, you can use it that way. So we use these the most. Um, it's very rare when we get into like the measurements and the conditions and the size. However, on phrases and sentences, when you guys are reading books, when you guys are reading magazines, newspapers, you do see them because when you are reading a document when you are reading a story there has to be a lot of detail and so i would like to use a book for example um if you guys were reading um let me see what was the last book i read um i think it was called it was called la legión perdida and so what they did is they, well, in the book, they try to provide a 
or to paint a picture with words. And so they have to spell everything out and they have to describe everything right down to the size of, you know, the shoes and the boots and the shields. And so I think when it comes into those types of uh, phrases and sentences, that's where you guys are going to see uh, the remaining of the modifiers. Um, you know, because everything has to be so detailed. However, for us, we usually don't provide too much detail, right? If we're telling a story, we try to make it quick, we try to make it uh, concise, and we try to tell the story as best possible. So we we have a tendency to stick to the very first uh, portions of the modifiers that we use. And so if you guys look at the list, I believe that this is pretty much maybe like uh, when I first saw it, I thought, oh my God, I, you know, it does make sense. I do hear it. I do see it, but I never really stopped to think about how everything was formulated. So now that I look at it, it, it actually kind of makes sense, right? It kind of makes sense. Purpose is the very last thing. Look at, because nobody really cares about you know what the purpose is unless you are truly describing something and you want to make a point so in the most you know for the most part purpose is the last thing that you will include and of course location and then whether it's electrical or mechanical like those are the last three okay so what do you guys think so far with the modifiers Be besides Besides, uh, you know, why the order or why do they have the order? Let me see if I can find modifiers rules. Sometimes they have them there. No, it's just examples. So the only thing that I am able to find is that there is something called a misplaced modifier. And so the example that they use is like this. Uh, they say, let me see. Can you guys, you guys can't see my screen, right? No, let me go ahead and show it to you guys. Let me show you guys the whole. All right, can you guys see the website? Yes. All right. So with this one here, uh, misplaced modifiers, usually they will provide additional details about the subject, verb or object in a sentence. Uh, they can be phrases. For example, the word pretty can modify girl. Ah. And the phrase who was smart can also modify the girl. So and then they have a few examples here. After painting all day, the chair was admired by Mark. Too many words. Okay. So what they're, what, it, what they're saying in terms of the rule is that the rule exists so that you don't make it too wordy and so that you don't confuse somebody when you are providing an explanation, when you are using it as a modifier pretty much. But other than that, I wasn't able to, I wasn't able to see anything. Let me see if I have something in the live worksheets. Ah, there's a little, there's some, some nice ones here. Oh, look at this one. I think we can try it out, right? All right, the modifiers are very pretty and really. Now, here's the thing. 
when you guys are having, so this is a, a quick hint for you guys. If you guys are having a, a professional conversation or you guys are sending a professional email, try not to use very or really. Um, that was a very interesting conversation. Forget about that, right? It, it comes out as too wordy, uh, too pretentious as well. Uh, I really liked our conversation. Don't don't use that. I liked my conversation. I liked our conversation is enough. You don't have to say really or you don't have to say very. Very and really are used mainly in regular conversations with, you know, with friends, family, um, people that you know, people that you see in the street. But if you want to get, you know, professional, uh, professional emails, professional conversations, you want to try not to use too many of those. Maybe you use one, um, you know, anywhere between one and two sentences. But if you use it too much, people will say, mm, you know, they start to look at you in a different way. So, so remember that, remember that. So these are for everyday conversations and in everyday conversations, you can definitely use them. All right, so let's try number one. Put the sentences in order. The modifiers, once again, very pretty and really. Who can help me out? Todos juntos. Somos un equipo. Somos un equipo. The dream team. <laughs> the dream team. There we go. Yeah. So we know we know that T H E has to go where? The beginning. The beginning. Yeah, it's number one. The number height one. is easy. No. Let me see. Hold on. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I think we got it like that. All right, look at the order. So the is number one. What else? What goes next? Hike. The hike. Okay. Is. Is. Pretty. Is. Pretty. Easy. It's all over the place. It keeps moving. There it is. It looks all weird. <laughs> all right. The hike is pretty easy. So we have the, which is number one. Hike is pretty easy. And I think we got it. Nice and easy. Yeah. Pretty. Oh, so those are nice and easy, beautiful, pretty. Okay. Let's try number two. This. This. Cake. Cake. Is that pretty good? Yes. Ah. Uh, pretty good. Oh, let me see. Is um, pretty good. <laughs> let me see. Sorry, it's all. It's really hard to drag and drop, man. No, you you'd figure it would be easy. No quedo. So I think this one. Oh, what's going on? You know, it didn't let me. Oh, this is a pretty good cake. This is a pretty good cake. Good cake. A pretty good cake. This is a pretty good cake. Yeah. All right, match it up with the modifiers. What's the order? This would be number one, right? This is actually all three in the very front. This is a, and then pretty good, pretty would go here. 
good would also go here because it's a, an opinion. And then cake. There's a pretty good cake. Yeah. That looks pretty good. All right, number three. Let's try number three. She's a pretty good chef. She is a pretty good chef. She's a pretty good and then chef. A good chef, she is pretty. No, right? I know. <laughs> okay, let's try number four. Number four. You are pretty good at berry. You are a berry. A berry. A very, very interesting person. Interesting person. All right. You're a very interesting person. Ah, you're a very interesting person. All right. <laughs> Number five. It's a very small window. It's a very small window. Hold on, I think. It's a very small window. It's a very small, so we have the size, and then window. All right, okay. Let's try number six. She wore I don't know. War? War. War. You you made you said it right. She wore she, a really beautiful dress. Uh really oh she wore a really beautiful dress. War. Okay. War. All right. Number seven. Ben is a really adorable baby. Ben is a feito el bichito. Ben is it's a, a baby, really adorable. No, really, it's a really adorable baby. Really adorable. Yeah, the thing the thing is that adorable is an opinion. So you guys, yes. yeah. So Ben is a really adorable baby. What is it? Right, all right, we got it, okay. All right, number eight. Truthfully, it's truthfully. It is truthfully. It is, it is awful. Pretty, pretty awful. So. Pretty awful. Truthfully, con cuando decís la neta, right? La neta, la verdad. Truthfully, it is pretty awful. All right. Number nine. We're almost done. We're almost done. We're almost out of here, guys. This was a little bit longer. She's 
she. <laughs> she. Yes, right. Sure. Rem remember that. Yeah. The, your, mine, her, she. Yeah. She. She has a. I don't know. She has a very. She has a very disturbing. Disturbing. Painting in her room. Her, room. Her room. Uh. I, I don't understand. She has a very disturbing painting. Uh. Yeah, that, that looks pretty good. She has a, yeah, that looks all right. Let's try it out, guys. Let's see, let's see. Ooh, here we go. If we get them wrong, don't worry. I think it was the teacher moving them around. La arruinó todas. Todas. Whoa. Diez Holy crap. Hola. Well done, everybody. No quiero decir que el teacher tuvo mucho que ver en eso, ¿verdad? Pero, <clears throat> o sea, si tú luces, si, ¿cómo es? si tú luces bien, el teacher luce mejor. Oh, all right, all right, everybody. Well done. <laughs> so, I want you guys to, to kind of take a look at these, right? And what happens is that if you move these around one bit, they will still say the same message. However, they somebody will somebody somebody at one point or another will tell you what I didn't understand because they won't be able to put the pieces together the same way, right? If, if you guys are telling the story now, you can forego, for example, not mentioning an A. However, you, somebody will will definitely notice, right? It's very small window. You could you could say something like that. You could get away with it. However, if somebody was really paying attention, they would say, "Oh my God, he he totally missed the A right there." Right. Um, what most people will notice really really quick is when you flip these around. Um, it's very a small window, right? If you say it like that, you know somebody will catch on to it really quick. Um, if, for example, you put it in the middle or you put it at the end, um, people will, will definitely kind of get confused or you will create confusion. And so sometimes you can get away with not completely using the modifiers in this order, right? For example, if you're not really paying attention and somebody says, this is a hot, long summer, you're probably not even going to notice, right? You're probably just going to say, yeah, you're right. Right, because we're pretty much accustomed to that. However, you, now that you guys have seen how modifiers work, you should be able to come back around and say, no, yeah, you have to start off with long, right? This is a long, hot summer. And you can also help people when they write, right? Se pueden convertir ustedes en grammar Nazis right there. Hey, comenzaste mal con eso, te lo voy a arreglar, va, y caerle mal a todo el mundo. No, no, a mí no, a mí no me molesta. You guys can always help me out. Uh, you know, I, I love it that you guys are able to help me out. Okay, so please keep in mind, we have the order one through 17. We have the modifiers that are set up um, this way, determiners, ordinals, cardinals. And, and so if you guys can't remember what a determiner is, you remember the example, uh, words like the or he or she, right? To start off the conversation, who, your, um, if you wanna go with ordinals, uh, you know, what order are you using? First, second, third, fourth, and you guys have to make a clear distinction if you're gonna use those, so be careful. Um, we only use that one, two when you're doing tasks, right? And remember that opinions are like the fourth option. So that would be pretty much how a normal conversation takes place. And then after that, you know, uh, size, measurement, condition, age, temperature, shape, color or pattern, origin, the season or time, material, power, location, and purpose. And uh, 
that is what's being covered in 3.7. And that's what you guys will also have to deal with during the knowledge checks. Let me see if it's, yeah. So they talk about the city and they talk about who is enjoying it the most. So for these two exercises, you have to listen to it. And then based on what you heard, you have to answer the questions, right? And you guys can see that the knowledge check is six questions long. Let me go ahead and, well, I didn't wanna, I think I am gonna, let's use the magic button, right? Now the ideal setting would be for you guys to listen to the recording and then come back around because in the previous listening exercises, some of the questions um, were wrong. Some of the answers were wrong, right? So uh, make sure you guys double check that. I will take a picture of this. Let me see if I can take a picture. Uh, it's gonna be too, you know what? I won't be able to, I won't be able to cover it all. But this is how it looks. And then so at the very beginning, you start off with marking them down, right? It's easy to get around Sydney. And then you have the answers. Let me see, let me put the answers. Let's see if it gives me any errors. And I believe they sent a WhatsApp message today as well. So, ojo con eso. Yeah, so they were they were right. So that is acknowledgement 3.8. 3.9 has the reading article. And then you have to either choose true or false. And once you complete that, you guys are going to come into section four, which we're going to cover next week. How about that? How about that? Uh, let me see. Remember that you guys can always go to the live wire, live worksheet, sorry. Dot com. And you guys can use these, the same examples. All you need to do is type in the word that you wanna use or the exercise that you wanna use, and then they will all show up and you don't get the answers, which means that you have to go at it alone. And then once you finish, click on finish and it will tell you whether you got them right or wrong. And then it gives you the explanations. So I definitely recommend that you guys use some of these for practice, of course, for practice. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I will give you guys four minutes back on your Friday night. Please enjoy your long weekend. Take it easy. No se gasten todo el pisto. Déjenle un poquito al teacher, por favor. And then I will see you guys again on Monday. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out uh, in the WhatsApp. Okay. Okay, right. thank you, teacher. All right, everybody, have a good night. Good night. Thank you, Take care, everybody. Thank you, teacher. Bye. Rav, you made you. it. Thank you. Thank you, Maricela. Bye. Yeah, then, man. Bye. I had really problems today. No problem. Today. No problem. Sorry. No worries, Rav. Don't worry. Okay, thanks.